My name is Gamili Kofi Bidiakun, and I am the administrative executive of the foundation. For our French audience, you can click on the tab at the bottom of the screen in the shape of the globe and choose the French option so you are able to follow the conversation and not miss anything. I'd also like to entreat all of us to observe the friendly space policy so this experience is a positive one for all of us. And then also at the bottom of the screen is the Q&A tab. You can go there and leave your questions so they can be addressed later on in the program. Okay, so today is about QX. It is an initiative to bring educational content to people in areas where there is no internet. It has been running since 2016 and has had an immense impact in Ghana. We are excited about it because it has grown to a point where it is expanding into other territories on the African continent. And in light of this, for this webinar, there is a group of experts who are in the education and tech spaces who will be having discussions around the concept of using tools to make educational content available in places where the internet is absent. And this is what Kiwix is about, making educational content available without the internet. So that said, I would like to introduce our first speaker. She is in the person of Amasewa Nekwe Tete. She is the Secretary General of the Ghana Commission for UNESCO and is responsible for coordinating Ghana's contributions to the UNESCO. She is also an advisor to the government on multilateral relations. She has successfully revamped the agency and elevated its profile, particularly in developing women and youth. Ama, is an acclaimed speaker and the president of the Asante Professionals Club in Ghana. She holds postgraduate degrees in international communications, education, education leadership and management, and completed her undergraduate studies in English and French. She cannot be with us, so we are going to play her video. Enjoy. Distinguished <laughs> Foundation West Africa for your consistency in collaborating with organizations and, such as ours to organize this event. As you all are aware, there are multiple efforts by the states and other institutions to provide complementary educational resources for educators and learners who lack internet access. The lack of a stable internet is indeed a constant barrier to education. In the world, especially in Africa. It is in this context that it is important that we continue to discuss and find innovative solutions to how we can solve this problem in Africa and by extension push the SDGs forward on our continent. I'm happy to make some key points at the onset. The first is that contrary to what many people think, internet is accessible. Of course, as a continent, we still have accessibility problems, but internet has been made accessible in many parts of Africa and can be used by many. So think about the number of people you know who have access to WhatsApp and others on their phones. One of the issues that we have is that Africans do not exploit our internet accessibility enough. We are not able to use it for highly beneficial purposes compared to others on other continents. Accessing internet in Africa remains an issue, but it's not the only issue that we have. Um, cost is an issue when it comes to access, because even though there is a lot of access, cost prevents many people 
of having a sports village. We found out that the most expensive internet is in Africa. I think um, on average, we pay 2.8% of our monthly income compared to, let's say, 36 in Latin America and 1.5% in Asia. Not many people hold their next use of the internet within this uh, information. The cost of one gigabyte costs as much for some people as one fifth of their revenue. And therefore, it has become a luxury and not the necessity that we need to be for it to help education. These are some of the things that we must think about when we discuss internet accessibility in Africa. Then there is a peripheral issue of network challenges. Even when we talk about accessibility of internet, how accessible is it? Is it 24 7? Is it available throughout the working day? Are we able to use this a good speed and quality? Unfortunately, in many parts of Africa, that is not the issue. There is also the case that most of our internet access providers are not present in some parts of even Ghana. There is zero internet access. I believe most of you may have traveled through parts of Africa and you get to a point where you realize that your internet does not work at all. And so, this remains an issue and a barrier when you're looking at internet accessibility. Then, of course, we cannot but talk about the high illiteracy rate when it comes to internet accessibility. The internet may be there, but how many people know how to use it to benefit them in their businesses, in their education, etc. And so there is a big need for us to ensure internet literacy, literacy for technology and the solutions it provides across our world. Um, how are these issues that I'm talking about impacting development? It is very clear. Developments are being propelled all over the world by access to technology. But if we have to exchanges, if our people are only tracing them, it stands to reason that our development will be impeded by this. What is the way forward? Um, as a transforming education summit, it's not just now in September 2022. Member states, the 193 member states of the UN. And there was a call to action on assuring the quality digital public learning for all. Remember, we are pushing internet as a public good, almost as a human right, not something that should be the pleasure of a few. The key focus from the TES summit is on the three keys of digital learning, which are content, capacity, and connectivity. Um, on content, capacity, and connectivity, we have to ensure that teachers and students access to the internet to use it in a tangible way to help their education. Um, we will not pretend to be having Zoom lessons where students are cutting in and out and cannot participate fully. The other point that I've been asked to touch on is how my organization. Ghana Commission for UNESCO has been involved in promoting open learning across the country. To start with, uh, Internet University Indicators um, has an advisory board in Ghana that we are part of. It is our duty to check and measure how we're doing. And we do this for partner organizations like the UNESCO Office in Accra, and GIFEC, etc. Then we are also working with many organizations on uh, platforms, elements. The one we worked on is the Imagine Learning at Ghana.com. I recommend those teachers who are listening as uh, a free to all site that you can use with your students. It's easy to access as an app online on your phones, etc. We are also involved in the reshaping of the new ICT education policy. And show that the standards that UNESCO has set for the world all find uh, expression in Ghana's policy. We are working on ICT competence framework, which is led by Sandlos and uh, the last office, uh, 
part of it in working to make sure that happens. The question of which the minister is doing in the field uh, was rather for those who keep it um, communicating with the process of media just to ensure that all courses, including the colleagues of education, teachers who are practicing, including people who work in the offices in education have access to technology to ensure that their work goes well. I'm looking forward to this conversation and to the joining uh, virtually, even though this is pre-recorded, to contribute where I can to what promises to be an enriching conversation. Uh, it is my expectation that this webinar will provide the opportunity for reflection, the spread of best practices, and about the uh, strategy for sustainability of this project. Once again, I commend the organizers to be assured in the future of our support and collaboration, and I wish all to move forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amasewa, for this informative session. We would like to take this opportunity to commend UNESCO for the strides made in the education space. We are excited about the KWIX project because it addresses the challenges of high internet costs, network instability, and absence altogether. This will bring free and easily accessible learning resources to places with internet challenges, and that will make available this basic human right. I would now like to call on our next speaker. He is Felix Nati, a tech enthusiast and an open advocate. He co-founded Open Foundation West Africa and Creative Commons Ghana chapter, where he is the chapter lead. He previously served on the board of KWIX and was named the Wikimedian of the Year in 2017 in recognition of his outstanding contributions to Wikimedia and the open movement. Today, Felix's commitment to addressing the challenges faced by Ghanaian students in accessing online resources led him to pilot the KWIX project in 2016, and this trained over 1,200 students. This inspired the inception of the KWIX for Schools project, which continues to provide students with access to high quality educational resources online. Felix, we are ready for you. Oh my God, this hype. <laughs> well, um, thank you very much, Kamali. And I am very excited to be here. I don't think <laughs> I, I have like a, a presentation that would include a lot of data, data points. I think I'm here to sort of like speak to the many of you that are here to see if there's an opportunity for you um, with Kiwix in your country. Uh, I'm very humbled by, by the fact that uh, something little that was started in 2016 has gotten to this extent and to the fact that it's it's um, creating impact than what I could have envisaged um, when I, I wanted to do this. So um, I think in 2016, um, I went to my first Wikimania and I met this handsome gentleman on this call called Stefan. And, <laughs> and Stefan was then... Um, is the CEO was and is still the CEO of QX. And so um, I think I happened to be in a session where the presentation on QX was done. And immediately I started asking myself like, doesn't this benefit my community? How can I bring this down to my people uh, to create value for uh, the people that I wanna serve? And I almost immediately realized that it, it complements what we've been striving to do. In the open movement, we care about free and accessibility to information and knowledge. And this is what Kiwix gives. It gives, just that Kiwix even does this in a much more um, uh, streamlined way that provides access to people beyond just the internet. And so we we tried this out, as he said, in 2016 in a school in the northern part of Ghana. And we had over between 800 to 1,200 students. I mean, there were a lot of students, we didn't count them. And so we, we, could, we could not pinpoint exactly how many people we had in the room, but certainly over a thousand people. And we sort of like modeled this whole Kiwich training, trained uh, the lecturers um, uh, in the high school 
we stalled um, the software on the computer. And then we sort of like tested and see what was going to happen. So I think in the span of three months, we did a research. Uh, we sent a survey back to the school just to understand how people interacted with the product and how what, what value it created for them and stuff like that. And we realized that um, some of the Wikimedia projects like Wikishnari and Wikipedia were actually being, Wikishnari was competing with Wikipedia actually. It was being used more than Wikipedia was being used. And that was because these students wanted means and ways to access simple resources like a dictionary and they just could not afford to do that. And so we, we noticed that this is like, even though it's not a one size fits all approach, it's an approach that actually serves our, our communities. And I always say as a Wikimedia or as a volunteer, when you are streamlining or designing your projects or programs, you always have to think about how does it impact my communities? How can I bring that high level um, project or campaign or program that has been run in other regions down into my, my context or in my region to be able to implement it in a way that benefits the people that are from my part of the world. And so I think having that approach to QX actually helped us scale the work that we did with QX. And after that training, I mean, it's, it's hard trying to break these circles and going to schools and trying to get them on board. And so we've, we've been trying, hitting and knocking, knocking on doors, trying to see how best we could do this. Um, and I think in somewhere in 2018 or 2019, uh, I did a host of trainings. Uh, at the time, I think OpenCon, um, it was a project by um, um, an organization in, I think, Canada. And uh, we ran our first open coins in Ghana. So we did a few satellite activities and we did some trainings in Kumasi, we did some trainings in Accra, in Tamale. Long story short, we were able to train a few people who were also inspired by what the possibilities of QX. And so they took this a step further and actually did it in schools. Um, and uh, I think at the time, where the was beginning to learn, oh, this actually empowers our people to be able to do what they want to do. And in a way, it was giving volunteers an opportunity to do something that they loved. Uh, as you may have already um, learned and by being in the Wikimedia space, you realize that people only contribute to Wikipedia based on their interests. And it's the same thing. People develop projects or run projects or, or programs based on what they are passionately driven to do. And so I think that training drove a lot of people to actually start other QX projects in other parts of the country. And today, it's a whole program at Open Foundation West Africa that is um, continuously um, providing resources in the, in the hands of people, students who cannot afford um, educational resources in the classroom, and also bringing them resources beyond their textbooks, like Wikipedia, Wikishnary, Wikiquotes, and all of these other projects that we curate and support within the Wikimedia space. So I am very elated to be here with all of you, and I'm even more elated to hear that this is breaking the ice um, by extending the project beyond the shores of Ghana. I can't wait to see what you guys will do with this project. And I believe Stefan and the other panelists have a lot more to say to what I've just shared. So thank you very much for being here. And I'm super inspired, humbled by, by the little feet um, that got us here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Felix. We are inspired by your passion for looking out for and wanting to improve the lives and interests of all that are home. You went the extra mile to bring this initiative to Ghana and it is spilling over to other parts of the continent. Africa and posterity are grateful. Thank you. We are now at the part where we will have the discussions. And I'd like to invite Ruby, who is our programs officer to coordinate that. Ruby, we are ready for you. Okay. Thank you so much. I want to warmly welcome everyone, including our panelists, for making it to today's um, discussion on the topic, how Africa can achieve open education and the use of offline tools like KWIX. And we all know that the spread of internet and mobile devices has really transformed the way that we assess and consume information. And, the, and education is not an exception. However, the digital divide still persists and access to online resources continue to remain a challenge for many people, particularly in Africa, as we all have uh, witnessed. In this context, offline tools like KWIX have emerged as a viable solution to providing access to educational resources in very low resourceful areas. 
In this panel discussion, we will explore the potential of KOX and other offline tools, how it can promote education in Africa. And we will also discuss some of the challenges and opportunities of using these tools to impact and, and the impact that they have on education in the region. We are inspired to have with us um, a STEAM group of panelists, these with, with very diverse um, backgrounds. We have educators, stakeholders, technologists, policymakers who will share very insightful experience on this topic. Um, I'd want to take a few moments to introduce our panelists. And the first on my list is um, please pardon me for the names. Um, I might not pronounce it well, but you have the opportunity to pronounce it yourself. So I have Stefan Kole Matilon. Um, oh, this is, is pretty good. Oh, wow. <laughs> who is an experienced Wikipedia editor from Switzerland who has been contributing to the online encyclopedia since 20, 2004. And he has held several positions, including being elected to the board of trustees of the Swiss chapter in 2014. In 2015, he became the interim executive director following a series of events and he completed the role successfully. He later founded KWIX, an offline Wikipedia reader to enable people without internet access to access online content. He launched the KWIX as an independent entity in 2017 and currently the CEO of KWIX. Warmly welcome, Ste Stefan. Um, the next guest on our list is Dan York. And unfortunately, Francis um, couldn't make it due to some unforeseen circumstances. Francis is the uh, chapter lead for ISOC Ghana. But we are thankful that we have Dan York from ISOC head office. Um, he is the director of internet technology at the Internet Society, where he is a project leader for the 2023 Sustainable Technology Sustainable Technical Community Project. He previously held the 2000, 2022 Low Earth Orbit Satellite Project and has been active in the open standards of the Internet Engineering Tax Force. He has been working with online community technology since 1980s and is the author of many books and networking security and networking security IPVS six liners and he speaks English German and a bit of French and enjoys activities such as running hiking kayaking and curling amazingly he also is a Wikipedia editor since 2004 wow amazing and he will be supported um, by Theorosa who is currently um, the youngest lecturer at the faculty of uh, Journalism and Media Studies at the Ghana Institute of Journalists and a strong advocate of digital rights and encryption. She's currently serves as a secretary for the Internet Society Ghana. And she additionally tutors encryption with the Internet Society Foundation. And she has also published a lot of articles around digital rights. And we are so happy to have her also to share some insight. And our last guest on the panel is Nurun, Nurunabi Chaudhuri. I hope I'm right. So he is also a journalist and a member of the Open Knowledge Foundation in Bangladesh with a passion for promoting open source, open data, open education. He has been actively really involved in Wikipedia, Creative Commons, Open Knowledge International for several years. And as an author, he has published five books under Creative Commons license. He also works with various organizations to promote open philosophy, open access, open education, and currently collaborates with the Center of Open Knowledge. Wow, we have such rich background from all our, our panelists. Um, so before, let's just zoom straight into the conversation. Um, my first question goes to my first panelist, who is Stefan. Um, Stefan, a lot of people have been 
I mean, I've heard about KOX. I've got people who are messaging me um, on every side. What is it about? What is KOX about? And it looks like um, this is the time. So can you help us understand what exactly is KOX and how does it work? Sure thing. Um, KOX basically, if you want to reference, it's like a browser. It's like Chrome or Firefox, except that it reads copies of your favorite websites. So what we do at KWIX is we harvest that content. So let's say take Wikipedia, because I see there's a good number of Wikipedians here today. We, we scout the website, we copy it, and we compress it. And that's really important, because now we can fit the, the entirety of the English Wikipedia, which is the largest with 6.5 million articles, onto an Android phone. It's 90 gigabytes. That's a lot of volume, but it tells you how much progress we made in compressing it. And once it's there, it's a single zip file. You can share it with whoever you want. You can put it on a flash drive. You can send it, you know, via Dropbox or whatever on an SD card. And whoever has it on their phone or on their computer, they can access it, read it, browse it, just as if they were on Wikipedia. And then the same for the other websites that we have. We can do YouTube channels. You can do Stack Overflow if you're learning to program and things like this. And we're expanding that range of content. But the idea really for Kiwix, if you want to understand what it is, is just a way to browse websites when there's no internet. So copies of the internet, internet offline. Wow, this is really amazing, intriguing. And I hope we are all learning what KWIX is today. My second question goes to Dan York. Um, so how has the internet society, I mean, the internet society has focused on connecting the unconnect. How do offline tools like this help at the work? Sure, thank you, and thank you to everybody attending. And uh, I'm, I'm disappointed Francis couldn't be here from our uh, Internet Society Ghana chapter, but I'm glad to step in and help a bit here and talk about this. So, you know, yes, at the Internet Society, we have a vision that the Internet is for everyone, and we you know, want to bring the opportunities of the Internet to everyone. We want to connect the unconnected. Um, a main way we're doing that is through the development of community networks, where we help communities build and manage their own connectivity to the Internet. And there's, a, there's community networks throughout Africa and around the world that are making this happen. And we want to see more of those. And, and I mean, honestly, if you have a community network with adequate internet connectivity, then people are online and they can access information and do all that. And that's, and that's great. But there are many places where offline tools can be very helpful because there isn't that connectivity yet. You know, a classic place is in advance of a community network or something like that. Um, we can be able to provide information to people so that they can um, build up the excitement and interest and knowledge and learn from the content that is on the internet. It's taking internet content, as Stefan said, and making available people offline. And it, it does a couple of fantastic things. First of all, it allows people to learn from the information that's there first and to use that in whatever way. It also allows them to learn how to work with internet con content. They learn how to use a, a web browser to be able to go between pages and work with things to search things to do that so that you know, when they do have connectivity at some point in the future, they already know how to do it. And that's part of the beauty part, beautiful part about this. We've also seen use cases for a, a community network that might be developed. You might have deployed, for instance, a local Wi-Fi network and or a local access like that, but you don't yet have connections back to the rest of the internet. So in the meantime, tools like Kiwix and others can help give them access to that content. You know, we, the Internet Society has done this in the past with uh, community networks in the DRC and in, in Ethiopia and some other different places where they got content before they had the connections. They had the local network and they were able to do that. There's also an interesting case where you might have a local community network, but you've got a limited internet connection. Your, your connection to the rest of the internet may be uh, maybe only through a satellite connection that doesn't have a lot of bandwidth. So if you imagine a school during the day you know, if they had all the students using it, they might log up that internet connection and not be able to use it. Uh, Kiwix allow, or other tools like that, offline tools, allow you to have that local copy so students can be browsing that, doing that, and working with it, and they're not hitting the main connection. They're not causing that. But a beautiful part about this is then those, you know, Kiwix and other tools need to be updated, right, to have the most recent versions of that. So what can happen is those schools can schedule things so that they do the updates in the middle of the night when people are sleeping, and they can be able to use that connection uh, to be able to download the latest updates. So it's a really nice, nice thing there. 
We've also seen a case, you know, as, as Stefan mentioned, you could put Kiwix, you know, on your mobile phone. So a student can be in the school where there's a community network and then be able to take Kiwix onto a phone, be able to download, you know, put the Wikipedia there, go back to their home, be able to do their learning, whatever else, where they don't have a connection, and then be able to come back in the school and to be able to work with that. Uh, similarly, we've seen community buildings that are maybe not quite on the, that network. They also can, again, have a, a place like that. And also just quite honestly, resilience in, in the face of power outages or network outages that may cause issues with the connection into the local location. So, uh, you know, our ultimate goal, of course, is to get everyone online. That's what our mission is, is to bring that there. But if you can't get internet, internet offline is a pretty nice way to be able to access content that's out there. Wow, this is interesting. I hope I uh, get our um, participants uh, putting in their question in the chat. Um, my next question goes to Nuranabi. Um, so how has open knowledge and uh, as an open knowledge enthusiast and journalist, what has been the challenge with assessing open knowledge tools? Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you all. I see so many faces, especially I meet uh, Stephen uh, in Wikimania and Felix. I also meet with him in uh, Wikimania in 2016-17. So uh, today, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for having me because uh, I'm interested to know so many things uh, and share my experience, you know, in in Bangladesh context, we are working with um, open education, open access uh, since 2006. So nowadays we we have internet connection in rural level, but as Dan said, that if you have internet access, but your connection speed is uh, no, not the standard level, then you're not able to access the content. There are so many open access content like Wikipedia and um, the student also interested to learn but they have not access so we are first of all we we, we uh, go to uh, uh, personally uh, I, it's my privilege i am uh, visited several uh, districts in bangladesh and meet with the education uh, institute uh, me um, build the community so that they engage the uh, school college and university so um, when, when we go go there we see students are really interested but they don't have uh, enough internet access. Now, in 2023, we have internet connection in rural level, but the connection speed is not that much enough. So, um, you know, the, the problem and challenges, if, 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 as my experience I see then last uh, few many years, we have uh, you know, awareness problem is uh, many, many big issues still now, and limited access, as I said, I, in, you know, I interested to read in Wikipedia in my rural school, but I don't have access. So it's another problem. And, and last thing, language barrier is a problem. You know, uh, there are lots of content available in English and other uh, leading language, but in local language to read uh, to, to the content in local language. So when we, are, we work on local school, local school, uh, college and university, they want to know how can access the, the content in our own language. So you work on Bengali Wikipedia, or you work on, you know, my as I am also write five books, and all books are published under open Creative Commons license. We also promote Creative Commons license in rural area because we believe, you know, few years ago we said knowledge is power, but today we say sharing knowledge is power because we believe it. Because if 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 we share the knowledge, then student will get access. Not only student, there are local people who are also interested to. Uh, read to know. So uh, in my uh, my experience, I see that the major if, if I say it, see major challenges. One is the uh, limited you know awareness because local people don't know about you know. Um, in recent time, I see many of have internet access in mobile, but they don't know what he or she use, how they go to the con content, what content they need. They only go to the you know uh, YouTube or something like that, but there are so many, um, you know, content access like Wikipedia, Project Gutenberg, uh, you know, Khan Academy, TED Talk, so many things, but they don't know about those contests. And another is access. Access is in access, uh, you know, 
if you access it available, but you don't if able to use them, that's not actually work. In this context, uh, QS is really cool uh, work of doing so many things. I attend your QX uh, seminar in when Stephen is presented in Wikimania. So I, I also share in my local school, if you need anything like that, we may definitely we work with uh, uh, QX to you know go to the rural level. There are so many rural area in uh, Bangladesh. That may ex exactly many countries have so many rural area uh, that people also don't have uh, and not able to uh, buy the you know uh, buy a laptop or buy a, a, a very high price smartphone. They have limited access. They buy limited phone like Fisher phone. They just want to read to know. And another thing is, as I said, the language barrier. So we also try to. And uh, be, uh, try to uh, barrier to try to work like and uh, Dan also said very interesting thing in Bangladesh we also connected with international society Dhaka Bangladesh so we collaboratively try to go you know we we are now not only based in you know like uh, capital city or the largest city we try to go the rural area because there are so many people lived here they don't they need access they need content so we just try to focus on this last you know from since 2006 and now 2023 we are doing the same issues we are go to the rural school we are in, you know math olympiad we arrange the robotics olympiad we try to push students you go to website or try to use wikipedia use gutenberg you go to khan academy so that will really help in even you know uh just i say when completed on this part when in our I, I see a real good experience. You know, people have people. If you give the access, if you give a you know tools, they easily to catch the uh, the detailing. Like uh, when in in uh, maybe uh, ten eight to ten years ago, people use smartphone. You know, button phone. So when I when I ask someone, oh, okay, say your phone mobile mobile number. So then then they said zero one seven one two. You know. They don't know zero one means in his or her language is, uh, is the meaning, but they understand. If I said, okay, say your uh, mobile number, they said zero one seven one two. So they easily catch it. And if I said, okay, send me SMS. So easily say she sent a SMS in using English word, but his you know, own language. But now we have a, you know, an app keyboard so that she write in Bangla. So that's that. Thing is different, but the, even still, our so many students, so many school, they have limited internet access. In, in a rural primary school, they don't have internet connection. Few are internet connected, but the uh, speed is too much slow. So uh, uh, I just uh, share this experience because if you need to go, you need to go to rural people. You uh, need to uh, build awareness. You need to give them. The total, uh, you know, the platform to, that the tools like Wikipedia and you introduce with KX like the, the tools like KX so that students are interested to uh, share. And last I said, in recently, yesterday, I got a news from a local uh, school, a student. He, uh, uh, he's a, he, he just recently completed his, uh, you know, higher sec secondary and uh, he attended International Informative Olympiad and he got a uh, offer from MIT to uh, attend the MIT in 2023. So that is really great news. He is also from our network. So from our Center for Open Knowledge, we are also doing the same uh, same work. Uh, maybe in next, we also work with Internet Society and Stephen in QX to go to our rural area. I wish to uh, to this event. I'm uh, definitely it will help so many. Uh, African people to access the knowledge. Wow, this is insightful. We are glad that all of us here have like <laughs> different experiences that we can learn from. And I love what you said that um, not just having knowledge is power, but sharing knowledge is power. So I'm coming to you, um, Theodore Rossi. Before I come to you, Theodore Rossi, I want um, Stefan to um, tell us how can we has been used. I mean, can you share some of the successful example around Africa? You have been co collaborating with some of the communities in uh, offline areas. Can you share some of the practical experience? 
Yes, you certainly. Yeah. And I can actually answer already one of the questions from uh, Ramatou from Nigeria. So Kiwix is free, um, which really helps for what um, Felix described, which is people take it and run with it and run the programs how they want it. So what we've seen in, in Africa, and I mean the bigger Africa, so that includes in Tunisia, I'll start from the north. Um, there was that project where they, they were hiding flash drives across the city. I think the city was Sayada. And they were hiding little flash drives with Wikipedia on it, and people could like plug their 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 computer and download Wikipedia and have it on their phone. It was kind of like a hack, but it was an interesting story. Otherwise, like in the more uh, in the more serious, if I may say, um, examples, we got the Orange Foundation, uh, which is the big tel telecom company. They are very active in the French speaking area, and they have what they call the um, digital schools. So they come, countryside schools, there's nothing, they build the whole school, they bring the whole package. And what they do is that they bring also solar panels, a small Raspberry Pi, which is this little thing here. And this creates actually a small network, like very much like Dan York uh, was, was discussing, a, a very local network that people can connect to. And what the foundation found is that people will take care a lot more about that network because it's kind of modern and it's also more resilient towards the, the the weather so than books and it's also cheaper. So they get those those little networks to to run with like the the whole curriculum. So every year they they update the content with the the yearly curriculum and they get it running. Now they have like five hundred thousand kids I think across mostly Francophone Africa. It's, but it goes all the way to Botswana. So it's kind of a, of a huge project. But if you look more broadly at what Kiwitz can do and to what I was saying just before, it really depends on your needs. Like literally we started Kiwix, um in Mali and the need was, well, okay, there's internet in Bamako, but you, you know, drive 20 kilometers, you're in the middle of nowhere and there's no nothing. So there was a small project to get started there and to get Wikipedia offline. Like Wikipedia was the, the starting point for most of the things that happened with QX. And so it worked and it worked fine and people were happy. And then, you know, and then from a side project, um, a few years later, it became the actual QX that we know now, but it started very small with someone that has specific need. You don't exactly know what they wanted, but you know, working offline seemed to, to be okay. But otherwise, if you look at other parts of the world, um, you can see that uh, that it really isn't things that we had planned for. Like Kiwix is currently being used in Antarctica because on the base is there in the South Pole, they have internet only five hours a day. So the rest of the time, you know, they need to have some resources locally. It's also being used in prisons because, you know, if you're, a, if you're in prison, uh, unless you're in Norway, you're not allowed to have access to the internet, but they have programs where they train people to get a job for when they exit prison. And this is a great resource because they can learn, like if they were in the free world, in the outside world, and they, they can they can practice and they learn to be developers and they get jobs afterwards. So it's, it's really helping people. And it's really nothing that we had planned for. At no point someone came say, hey, I'm working in a prison, can you help us? They just took it. And that's the way it should be. And that's the power of free. That's exactly where you want free knowledge to be because people can decide what's best for us. So what we do at Kiwix is that we receive the demands, we provide the software and people come to us and say, okay, this is the content I need. And then we will try to provide it offline. And that's, the, that's where the interaction is. We will never tell you what you should do with it. We will never tell you, hey, this is great, but this is better. No, we will tell you, okay, what do you need? And we'll try to help you. If we can help you, then we will do it. And I have like examples from all over the place. I mean, I have one download from Eritrea once a year. And then there's a guy who wrote to me saying, yeah, I'm a university professor in, in Eritrea. Um, Asmara is the capital. And what happens is that we got everyone going to the same internet cafe in town. They get their copy of Wikipedia and some books. They got it on their phone. And then they have the whole resources at hand because books are too expensive. But then as far as I'm concerned, I have one download and that's the one cyber cafe but it's cool. So it's kind of hard to get the metrics. Um, like, you know, being people being offline, it's, it's, it's kind of, you're like, okay, I dare to guess. Um, but essentially every single situation where you can think the internet doesn't work, you will get someone using Kiwix. I have a lady who's doing cruise around the world 
Like, okay, she doesn't need to work, obviously, but she's using Kiwix. So anyone can use it for any purpose, and we're just there to help. Wow, anyone can use it for any purpose, and you have to just be innovative around it and find where you need it. Thank you so much, Stefan. So I'll be coming to you, Dan, but before then, I'd like to hear from Theo Rosa. Theo Rosi, sorry if I mentioned it wrongly. Um, can you share um, briefly, you have been doing a lot of um, education around internet safety and all of that in schools and all of that. How do you think offline tools like this can promote the work that ISOC is already doing? And also we, we have communities joining from all over Ghana, uh, Africa, who are looking to, I mean, form new partnership with organizations who can promote their KWIX projects and all of that. What opportunities are there in and what opportunities generally do um, ISOC provide, especially when it comes to education? Okay, thank you so much, Ruby. I think that is a power-packed set of questions and I'll do well to take each at a time and feel free to let me know if I skipped any of them. Um, my name is Theo Rose and I'm standing on behalf of Francis, um, the president for ISOC Ghana chapter, but I'm currently serving as the secretary for that. So I'm just going to start with, um, I'm going to start first with um, where ISOC is for now, because it's, it's very important that um, we know where the, um, where the program could reach up to. Um, I think that everybody's entitled to have access to the internet. Um, it has been one of the major discussions in all or most of the tech um, events, but we can also be realistic to know that, I mean, in as much as we are fighting for everybody to have access, it's going to take a longer time for some um, countries to have that free access. And that is why I'm very um, happy to Stefan and the group for creating this learning platform or learning tool where you can use it without the internet. So now everybody has access to tools to use. Um, for ISOC um, in Africa, we are currently in 38 countries. Um, I'm sure that, yes, in 38 African countries, let me be specific, not the world, because I know ISOC has a lot of chapters all over the world. Um, I mean, in Nigeria, Benin, Chad, Kenya, I will share a, a, a link in the chat as well um, that takes you to the ISOC Foundation website where you could see all those um countries that ISOC is in now. And if anybody's interested in becoming a member, the person could go there as well. And so it's, uh, I mean, Kiwix could um, partner with any of those local chapters. And I'm sure that it's in good line because um, ISOC is a big support for connecting the unconnected for some years. It has been the theme trying to connect the unconnected. So this is a huge flat for us. Now to the next question, is, um, which is more steer towards the Ghana chapter. I must also say that it is in a good hand um, because one of our major um, projects that we've been working on since last year is trying to um, is to champion digital literacy education. It's been one of our major things that we've been working on. And then, um, and through that initiative or um, that aim, we had um, the ISOC Next Generation project where we move into senior high schools in um, some selected areas in Ghana, um, take them through digital literacy projects. Um, we usually do that. It's a one week project that we do. We, we partner with institutions as well, where we um, take them through how to be safe online, some of the online platforms that they could use and the resources. And so that's something um, this actually came in handy um, for us. Last year we were at Laboni. Um, the year before, that's 2021, we were in, in Sawam Senior High School, which is out of Accra. This year we are hoping. So we moved from secondary schools to secondary schools to be able to do that. So we could also introduce this e learning. Um, um, soft, not softwares, e-learning materials um, in those <laughs> institutions as well, sorry, um, to help. And, and aside that as well, as a chapter, we are trying to move again into the universities because we realize that um, access to internet or even using technology is across. You can teach one 
age group, for example, and said that once you are taught at maybe um, between the age of 10 to 15, you don't need it when you are older. You'll be surprised that even at the university level, there are some universities that do not have enough um resources or e-learning resources so um this year as part of our project at ISO Ghana as well um we are trying to have collaborations with um, universities have public lectures um introduce them into what internet society does and how we can collaborate with that so um I think that we perfectly fit into um, um Kiwix and their project and we are very open to know how we can actually help um, what specifically they will require require of us to do we are open to that um, I think I did just it to all but you can always draw my attention to any that I skip yeah. wow this is beautiful thank you so much for tuning to yeah. Rosie um so you, back to um Dan I understand that you have had some personal experience seeing the power of offline tools for schools what was that experience like if you can sure. share yeah. So, so seven years ago, back in 2016, I was in um, in Cancun, Mexico for an, an OECD, a, a ministerial meeting and pieces there. And I went with a group from our Internet Society Mexico chapter. Um, we drove out about an hour or so into the it's the, the, the jungle area of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And it was a small town, about 400 people or so, no Internet access at all. And and they had um, a couple of schools. Uh, they had a couple of classrooms, two classrooms in a school. And um, the Mexico chapter had partnered with a local organization to bring, essentially, it, it's not Kiwix, but it was another kind of software that was providing offline tools. And they did exactly what Stefan was mentioning there. They had a little Raspberry Pi with a Wi-Fi access point on it. They brought that there into the school and they had um, a, a computer that was one there and somebody had been able to fund a couple of iPads to be able to bring those in there. And watching the kids in the school be able to access this information because they had, it was Wikipedia and, and some other software, but it's Wikipedia was the main site. And they could go and they could look up information about Mexico, about where they were and be able to read about their 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 area and their and their section of things. And they could look up, they looked up where we had come from. And they had been able to look and see this kind of information, but just to watch the, the faces of the students light up because they had that ability to go and, and learn and you know have the same experience that many of us just take for granted, having internet connectivity. And these these students were able to do that. It was it it that was the first time I'd ever seen this kind of offline tools. And it really had a profound uh, impact on me to be able to look at that and say, wow, this is a way to help people get internet content when they don't have an internet connection. And those students may go on and, and be able to go out into other places of the world and where they do have that the internet experience or the internet connectivity, but then they have the experience. They already have started learning how to work with the internet. They know what Wikipedia is. They know what other things are. They can be able to get there and do that. So you're providing that digital literacy, those, those online skills, so that people can, can grow on from there. And at some point, I hope that town, I haven't checked in, but I'd hope that town at some point, could that village could get connectivity. And when they do, those kids are ready for it. So it was a beautiful experience. It made me think so much about the power of this, which was why I was delighted to be able to participate today. I think it's it's great work to help bring that internet content to people who don't yet have internet access. Wow. Yeah, just to rebound on what Dan said, it's something I've seen many, many places in the world that people would, for the first time, access internet content. They check out their own place. They are super happy to see that they are on the internet. And for anyone who's trying to, you know, to, to go to a school and say, okay, I'm going to pitch Kiwix or Wikipedia or whatever, like literally you don't want to to tell them i'm bringing you the world i'm bringing what the world knows about you already and people are super proud and that that gets you a lot of buying already wow that's a so powerful we have a lot of things to talk about um this is to our participants we're going to talk a lot about the mentorship program in a bit but we, my next question goes to nuniabi I don't know if I'm still pronouncing it right. How do you think, as a journalist, you're also an open knowledge enthusiast. How do you think um, these kind of tools can 
be promoted? Like, how can we increase awareness and encourage people to use these kind of tools? And what are some of the open knowledge platforms that you think we can leverage on? Because you also like ent enthusiasts of technology, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, my name is, you know, you know Nurun Nubi. Nurun Nubi is good. <laughs> it's okay. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> well, uh, it's my, in, in our experience, we see if we arrange different type of, uh, you know, awareness program we, in education institute that will really help students and the, the around here and the uh, student and local, you know, administration. So also we try, we are doing so many outreach community outreach event so that we connect not only in education institute we also connect to the local community people. Uh, we are doing partnership in local people. You know, not only the school we also go to high school, uh, colleges, universities, and uh, you know as as here in discuss so many about you know offline access. So we also work on that in little, uh, little. We try to increase. You know, in 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 this point, I share in you know in Bangladesh, the Bangladesh government every year in January first, they provide 320 million books free to the students. You know, in primary and high school students to free books, and that is huge. Is uh, one of the largest free book distributor uh, in Bangladesh. So we all, but you know. The problem is that you know that the, the number is too much so that every student not get the book on, on the same day on same time. But the government also uh, published those book content in, in the online and government website. But you know, you know, the it's the government work. So the book size is really big. The, you know, so many megabyte or gigabyte, as uh, Stephen said, if the size is not small. Even in rural area, the students or the parents not able to access the content. So I am also planning to uh, work under Center for Open Knowledge to uh, access those books in a single platform like QX, so that we also uh, go to the rural school and provide them offline access also. If they not get their uh, books, hard copy books on on time, then they get able to access uh, you know offline by the book. So it's happening in, in upcoming days. We are also may work on that. And uh, it's a translation. You know, it's, it, as I said in in my previous uh, previous time that uh, language barrier is a big problem. So we are uh, doing lots of translation work, not on the open knowledge section. We also doing so many so many areas. They're like you know people use Google, so we also translate try to Google so that people easy to access. Okay. He or uh, she might be, you know, start something in own language that is really helpful for uh, those. Then, and finally, we are doing so many advocacy type program. It's not like that. We are in the seminar. We discuss. We are. We, we just go to the, you know, like we go to a, a rural primary school. We first sit with the teachers, with a group of students. Then we monitor them. Okay, uh, if we provide. We, we just said this is the content. If you need to learn in own language, this is the books. So if you need any access, you can reach out anytime. It's any any access you, you can call us. You can you know access you know email. So many issues we just provide them, and they if they you know connect. We not only that we try to engage them all the students in our rural areas to different type of Olympiad, like you know math Olympiad. You know, robot Olympiad, you know, informatics Olympiad. So that if I said, okay, if you go to this uh, platform so like Wikipedia, Project Gutenberg, you know, Wikisionary, uh, if you uh, learn learn to know so many things, you may go to Khan Academy or TED Talks, then you may interested to choose your subject and you may go to the Math Olympiad, go to the Robotics Olympiad, go to the Informatics Olympiad, whichever you interested. So student, really interested to know okay if i read this i may go to this you know uh, this uh, uh, olympiad or something like that so we just we try to go at doing advocacy you try to doing training commentary at risk and try to connect them in next level okay we said okay 
this is our you know 50 or 100 or 500 students we monitored them after a after a certain line later if they are doing they are if they you know uh, surfing the way uh, this content site or not and uh, later we are in the simple you know program that if if, if you are doing this great okay we are uh, gift you a book or something like that they are really much interested to connect with you so i think uh, you know uh, there are so many challenges but if we uh, share the so many knowledge you know uh, personally i also i, I try you know um, and i try to take picture i am not a good uh, photographer but i i love to play uh, so i encourage them if you if a student any i meet a student here yeah, i said if you interested to uh, click interested to take photos just click it upload it comments so that so many people get the photos from the comments you also get get the links to the to your friends they say they see your photos and in open knowledge foundation i'm connected with open knowledge foundation since 2013 so i i uh, attend the uh, open knowledge uh, festival in germany open knowledge conference in switzerland so i also shared the same experience in in bangladeshi different division uh, you know, we celebrate Open Data Day, Open Education Day, so that that particular day we just go to the rural area, connected the local schools, and try to promote open education, open access. In last thing, I said, you know, finally, if we get you know uh, good uh, response from government, so it will really helpful. So we also try to connect our government level and uh, convince them to provide the open access. Uh, open access policy yeah, so you all are happy to know in bangladesh we already uh, on process to uh, create open access policy that will help so many you know so many content and especially in student in university from the so center for open knowledge our president professor mustafa azad kamal work on it and uh, he also uh, uh, treasurer of a bangladesh open university one of the largest university in bangladesh so we already implemented implemented open access policy in that university so in in, in in next time we are also try to convince the government if they provide the content they must you know, publish or provide the content under a open license so that they, they, they will be accessible for all so I, I i i just share those experiences because i think if uh, there are so many countries they also try to follow this type of um, experience they also get the same result that's wow. it thank you wow this is such a rich experience and we all know that governments have been trying hard to publish books and send around and we're facing the same thing in africa here and we need to work smart okay so tools like this are going to help the governments to really facilitate and Theo rosa you are a lecturer and I think you would have a little um, insight about, can you share a little light about, um, just, a, just to follow up on what Norumbi has shared? Yeah. Uh, yes, um, you would, uh, I, I must say that, I mean, what he said is not only in, um, in his country, it's actually everywhere. Um, I work in the university setting and until I think if even now we are fully not accepting for example, content from Wikipedia as um, um, an academic reference. Uh, be, I mean, there are, there are several discussions back and forth on that. Um, it's really assumed in one point that it's um, it's not well referenced, which I don't agree with. But uh, I mean, it's, it's so that that is one aspect. Then even the availability of resources is it's a lot. You'd be surprised that the uh, I mean issues about AI, for example, um, you would hardly see research on those things or resources available. So if you're a student and you are doing your dissertation on artificial intelligence, you have no resources at all. There, there's no tool or anything for that. Um, because, uh, I mean, for, for obvious reasons, um, academics would prefer to write on something else. Um, they would prefer to wait for it to be very popular. So maybe probably they would prefer to write about it after three years. Um, and so there are things that are lacking. Then I, again, I would say that um, 
um, in terms of um, having resources available as well, um, it could be due to a lot of factors. Um, funding, for example, when um, you have an institution that is still led, for example, in learning, let's say communication studies, um, they may not be interested in investing into resources that are not in that area. Um, even they may not even they may not be adaptable. So um, older generations are still getting used to online resources. They still prefer hard copy books than online resources. So yeah, I I, I think that um, the the education and the literacy we are we are championing for should be across all age gaps as well. You'd be surprised. People still prefer hard copies. They they feel that hard copy books are more respectable. Um, more accurate than the soft copy of the same book anyway. And it's the same thing for um, student as well, bringing into the student space. And um, again, it's a good thing because now we have Wikimedia, we have all those things that are um, resources that are um, profession centered, that are that is inclusive, I'll train people to become editors. They bring the student closer. So it's just one thing. And even launching a resources that doesn't need internet, because again, one of the major challenges that we face, um, I'm saying, I would say Africa, because that's where my research expands to, or that's where I'm knowledgeable in. I don't want to mention an area that I'm not a pro in, but anybody who feel free to jump in to correct me and all that. Um, mostly in Africa, one of the major challenges we are facing is connection. And so even if the resources are available, but people don't have stable internet connection, we still would not be able to achieve the literacy that we are working on. And that is why I'm very much grateful that without internet, without um, electricity, we could still have resources available because again, somebody could have um, access to data, but there is no light. The light is on and off and all that. We still will not be able to achieve. Somebody has light virtually every day, but cannot afford broadband data because they are too expensive or that even if they're able to afford a little, the network is terrible. So it keeps baffling and it's going up and down and all those things. So in, I mean, having a resource that doesn't rely extensively on data, doesn't rely on electricity um, is a good plus. What I advise, um, or what not advise actually to suggest is that um, Kiwik's partner more, um, try to go into the university settings, the educational sectors and all that. Um, getting a lot of people to subscribe to your resources is a plus when you go into the academic community because they have larger population. Imagine you have more than 10,000 in just one institution, um, leveraging on your um, resources to work and all that, it's a plus for you. And I think again, that I saw Ghana Japta is in a good position since we are already into that business to, um, to educate people to do more for you. I hope that this helps. Wow, this is so insightful. Thank you so much, Theo Rosie for sharing your experience as an educator. So my last question to Stefan, then I'll go to Dan and then Felix. Felix has something to share also. Um, so um, Stefan, so talking about, um, you, you said, you, you, you mentioned that people can um, be innovative in the way that they use the online tool. So how can we encourage more of these innovation and investment? Because I mean, if we want to start implementing the project that requires going to places and all of that, um, which is also a bit uh, costly. So how do we encourage more innovation and investment in offline tools? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a complicated part. Um, essentially innovation happens when you don't have any other choice. So people need to figure out what their need is, what their audience will be, like what would they want to to present to, and then what is missing from from them to to achieve that. And then they will be looking for partners. Uh, we are Kiwix, we're very small. We were like less than 10 people. We're based in Switzerland. We don't have any anyone locally. We're being used in 212 countries and territories. We got like 10 million users. So definitely, even if I wanted to help everyone, I couldn't. There's not enough, not enough days in a, in a year for that. Um, so you need to, to find a local partner. Every, every country has foundations, organizations that specialize on local needs. You need to, to speak to those people, say, look, I've got a solution. I've got the problem. 
and they match. What I need is your help. And usually like a three, three party kind of work like this is, is what works best because everyone knows what is locally there. And um, in my experience, that's, that's how I see things working best. Thank you so much, Stefan. So we are going to be talking about the mentorship program in a bit, but um, I don't know if Dan has the last words for us and then Felix also would come in and then we, 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 we come to the end of the panel discussion and then we jump straight into what the mentorship program is all about. Sure, I'd, I'll just say thank you to everybody who's coming here. I've seen, I love the comments in the chat and the Q&A. Um, you know, this is, uh, the opportunity is here to, to help you know, pave the way for full internet connectivity and to give people you know, access to the internet offline when they can't get it online. And I think that we've heard so many great case studies here, so many great examples of, of how it can be used. I would encourage everybody listening to, you know, um, uh, I see people asking, can we use this in our country? I mean, as Stefan said, Kiwix is free. You can just go to the website. You know, I did it just you know, the other day, and I just downloaded it on my phone and put it on there. So you don't have to ask permission. That's the beauty of the open internet. You can just go to you know kiwix.org and download that. There are, are other similar tools out there, and you can go and download those. So you don't have to you don't have to wait. You can just get it, start to use it. And I think that's really what this mentorship program is about: is really helping people have a path to understand more about how they can use it and move it forward. So I'm thrilled that our Ghana chapter, it's great to see, uh, and and it's I'm thrilled they're involved with working this program, and I encourage you all to just get involved. Let's bring the internet to everyone. Wow, thank you so much, and we wanted to also invite Felix to um, share some last thoughts. I think pretty much everything has been said, so I can't say enough of what everybody has said. It is all about localizing the tool in your country, finding out what the problem is and trying to see how best you can approach that um, problem in your country. Basically, that's it. Thank you so much. We so much appreciative of your time. Um, we will move, I will hand over to Gameli, who is the moderator to take us to the next um, session. Okay. Thank you so much, Stefan, Dan York, Theo Rose, Felix, and Runobi. Your deep knowledge and experience in the tech, education, and journalism spaces has opened our eyes to a lot of prospects, and this will go a long way in helping us make the most of the Quebec opportunity. Thank you. I'd like to pause here to remind all of us about the Q&A tab. If you have any questions, you can go there type them up and they will be answered. And the launch is close, very close. But before we get into that, let's watch a short video about the star of the moment, Kiwix. For most teachers and learners in Africa, access to educational resources continue to be a challenge. Part of this problem can be attributed to the high cost of internet or poor internet connectivity, which is often not reliable or available at all. This has forced many students and teachers to rely solely on textbook for learning and teachers, respectively, depriving them the opportunity to assess complementary form of educational content that the internet offers. This was more apparent during the pandemic, where teachers and students had to rely on the internet to teach and learn across the world. The Kiwix for Scope project is an initiative 
that is aimed at offering a sustainable solution to challenges around internet access for educated members. Phoenix is a free software brings knowledge to millions around the world by making online educational resources available often. From browsing Wikipedia to reading books from the Gutenberg Library or watching TED Talks or searching for the meaning of a word on Wikishnary, Helix alleviates the burden of poor or high internet use. The amazing thing about Helix is that one can determine the content put on it to suit its users. Since 2016, we have trained over 5,000 students and about 100 teachers in over six regions in Ghana, making KWIX accessible to over 2 million students' population. And we are excited to expand this impact across Africa and beyond. In the famous words of Shai Rishet, when you educate one person, you can change a life. And when you educate many, you can change the world. Let's change the world today. Wow. Okay. We have heard everything from the panelists. We've heard everything from the panelists and we have seen the video. So I guess we are ready. So with drum rolls, drum rolls, louder, louder. I now declare the Kiwix Africa Mentorship Program officially launched. <laughs> okay. So now that that has happened, I'd like to hand over to Ruby so she takes us through the details of the program. Thank you so much, Gameli. So we're here to learn more about what the KWIS for School Africa Mentorship Program. We've heard so much, and I think um, a lot of you are having ideas already as to how you want to go about using this tool to impact your community. So um, we really acknowledge that it's not just enough um, to let people take a course or like do an online training and all of that, but providing mentorship and support and guidance on how to navigate the tool to the point where you implement the project is of vital importance, especially when we want to ensure that these tools are being used in all of these countries that we are targeting. And also building skills is also very important for us to achieve the impact that we are looking for, which is why we launched the African Mentorship Program to sort of provide that kind of um, step system guidance. Because sometimes you tell people, go and download the KOX, they don't even understand what exactly it is, how to go about it, how to even put files on it. It's a whole mystery altogether. And this is one of the challenges that we have identified uh, and then we want to provide solutions to that. So the KWIX um, for School Africa Mentorship Program is going to run a short course where we're going to leverage on online platform because we understand that we have so much um, diversity of people coming from different locations, different time zones. So we need to really be innovative how we're going to um, connect to all of these uh, communities. And then we would also integrate um, live sessions where uh, people could have more practical or support from our trainers and mentors who will be supporting um, this project. In fact, I must say that if we want to wait for Africa's internet connectivity issue to be fully resolved, then we are likely to wait forever, just like Theodora um, mentioned. So and, and, and that means that a lot of a millions of students will be left out and we don't want that. So this is a great opportunity for community uh, members, volunteers across Africa 
to get the skill and also take it to their community. And that way, together, we can achieve the impact that we all have been looking for. Um, we, we also want to um, clarify that KWIS is not just for school. Our project is called KWIS for School, but that doesn't mean that the impact is limited to school because you can also um, impact libraries, community libraries, even your office, or even personally, you can use KWIS um, together. Yes. So someone will ask, what are the opportunities in there for me? There's enormous opportunities that you will be open to once you acquire the skill. And our amazing speakers have talked about how they use K how they use KWX to impact their community, their experience, and all of that. And this is a great opportunity for you. And first of all, when you participate in this Africa Mentorship Program, you will become a certified uh, KWX for School implementer. So we're going to award you a certificate of completion of the pro of the course and mentorship, and you get to be also a Kiwis for School ambassador in your country. And that is exciting, which means that um, we're going to continue to support you. And also we hoping to, we're going to be running a mini fund opportunity and we're piloting this. We want to see how it will go. If it goes well, we're going to take, um, we're going to target more uh, opportunities for more people in, in the coming year. So we're going to, give our funds to be implemented in five countries. As a pilot, we want to explore how this goes, how this works, the challenges, and how we can be more supportive um, in the coming years. So uh, please watch out for this opportunity as well. And another thing that you can benefit from this program is that it gives you the leverage in the sense that you are able to connect with local partners. So local partners like Internet Society who is here to support us, this is a great opportunity. They are other organization, Open Knowledge Initiative, so many organizations that are looking to make impact in education. This is your opportunity to um, be innovative, send proposals around. You can get grants to implement this project in your community. So this is a very um, useful lifelong skill that can help you wherever that you go. Recently, someone was telling me about um, how um, he got maintained at his job just because of Wikipedia, you know? He saw, they saw that, no, he could do something with Wikipedia and they were very um, in, 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 insightful. So this is also an, another skill that you can get in addition to your already existing skill and see how you can make impact in your community. Another thing is uh, we also wanna emphasize that we've seen that in the tech space, a lot of men dominate than women which means that the men are going for all the opportunities and we want to encourage more women participation in this program as much as possible. If you are a woman, a lady, um, we want you to be part. We want to have you on board. So please look out for, for, for that. And there's, there's a registration link. If you're already registered um, with this program, we had more than 260. We had 264 people who said they want to be part of this program. Wow, this is such a number. <laughs> so we are seeing how we would organize the training in badges. So we are not going to do all at once. We want to take it in badges. So expect emails from us. When is your turn for the first badge, which we are hoping, which we will be launching in April. So um, we will recruit the first badge in April and then it will follow up to um, the month of June. So please, we have all your details. Those who sign up on the Google form already, you do not need to um, sign up again. But if you haven't registered yet for the KWIS for School Mentorship Program, then there's a Google form that will be shared in the chat. You can sign up and then we can take it from there. So the program is not... Um, so long, but there's going to be a, a, another session where you'll be linked to a mentor who is going to support you as to how you're going to implement your project, give you guidance. If you are facing technical challenge, challenges, that mentor will be the one to help you to resolve all your technical challenges. We also have a Telegram channel where for easy access of um, communication and support, it's, it could be a good opportunity for you to be part of that channel so that we can better support you. And also 
network, collaborate. You have a whole community from all over Africa. This is a great opportunity to um, start talking about collaboration and how you can work together. And we have amazing um, trainers who have been supporting us during the Africa, um, during the Ghana Kiwis for School program, uh, who are with us here today. I don't know if um, Yijin have a tool and, and Maxwell to say hello to our, part, our community. They have been really supportive doing training for the past years in our, uh, for our Kiwis for School implementation program. And we must commend their work. They've done so amazing for us to bring this project to this extent. We really acknowledge your support. Um, I don't know if Maxwell is here, but, or um, Otuo, yes, if you can say a word or two um, and let your let our participants um, see the, the, the hard work that you are doing. And so also Maxwell has also been very instrumental in, in helping us uh, connect with Internet Society, Open Knowledge Initiative, and 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 other collaborations that we have been doing in the community as well as Otuo. So, um, yeah, please, the floor is yours, Maxwell. Thank you very much. Um, uh, it's been an amazing session. I've really enjoyed a lot. Um, just uh, uh, because the speakers have said it all, I just want to say that um, the 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 whole Kiwix is just an inspiration, and it's something that uh, I think is timely, and it's uh, um, and the way forward for Africa, particularly in the area of um, transforming our education and also bridging the whole um, education um, poverty that we have. So um, over the years, we've been training, we've been um, providing support for the KWEX. And then um, just recently, uh, there are a group of trainers that are also um, going to support. And I think that um, it's time and then it's very open, it's very flexible. And I believe that um, just as a lot of people are expressing interest, um, it's just a process that would all have to go through. Our doors are very open and always. And uh, just to add to it, uh, KWIX has always been my darling. KWIX has always been something that as an educator, I fully understand its usage and all. And then um, it, it's not even limited to just the KWIX for schools or the African uh, mentorship, just as you said, um, it can be used in various areas. And then also we can explore other opportunities as well. So um, I'll just, um, end with uh, the, the whole idea that let's all come together and then help bridge the um, educational poverty and information access that we are facing in Africa. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much, Maxwell. Um, Otto, we want to hear from you also. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Obi, for the wonderful opportunity. Um, a lot has already been said. I just want to add my voice to the fact that to be able to bridge the digital divide, we need to innovate ways to be able to do that, especially if us coming from the global south. Um, we have to be very innovative, and I think KWH is one of the best ways to be innovative when it comes to bridging the digital gap. And so um, I've been doing this for some time now, and I'm trying to even implement steps in my area of expertise, that is environmental scientists, into the whole KWIS agenda. And I think that the time for us to collaborate and then work together to be able to put Africa on the map of technology and the digitalization is now. And so we have to see ourselves as people working together. And as I've always said, collaboration should lead to co creation, where we collaborate to co create solutions that are best fit. And we should do this the African way. And one of the ways to help us do it, especially in a place where um, internet is more or less a luxury. KWIX will provide us that solution. And so the time for us to be able to learn about KWIX and its importance and how to be able to use KWIX to the very best of it is now. And as a mentor, I would always say, my doors are open, I'm ready to share my knowledge, my experiences and exposure so far as using KWIX is concerned with everyone who's so interested. So the time for us to work is now. Let's work together to get Africa on the spotlight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Otuo. 
Wow, the time for us to work is now. Let's work together and put Africa on the map. And they are going to be supported by other mentors. So please don't be afraid that it's just two people. There are going to be a lot of mentors who are going to be supporting them. Sorry, I was muted all as well. <laughs> yeah, so um, thank you so much, Maxwell and Otuo, for um, also sharing a bit of your experience. We are so grateful. And so let's, I mean, the, they are going to be supported by other mentors. So don't be scared. These are not just the, they are not just two, but they have a lot of people who are also going to be supporting with the training and mentorship to make sure that you acquire the necessary skill that is needed to implement your KREX project. Yes, so we'll move to the next section. Um, since we have all the panels here, maybe we can take a full picture. I'll leave it to the next person to take over from here. Thank you so much, Ruby, for taking us through the program. And for Maxwell and Otu, your passion, commitment, and expertise on this project give us the confidence that the mentees have the best of trainers. Thank you. Next, on the program, I'd like to invite Eugene Masiku, who is our communications officer, to introduce the social media handles to us and also handle the Q&A section. So be, before that, we'll take a, a group photo. So all the, the panelists on the on board, we want to take a group photo for our social media communication. So if you're here, Theo Rosie, um, um, Bill, Renee, um, yeah. Renee, you are behind the light, okay. Okay, one. One, two, three. <laughs> Renee is our French interpreter doing amazing work. One, two, three. Okay, that's great. Thank you all. Eugene. Okay, thank you so much, Ruby. Thank you so much, Gameli. Uh, like Gameli said, I'm going to quickly just share our social media handles with everyone, just so we connect, just so we talk to each other, just so if you have any questions, you just, you know, hit us up and then we'll get back to you. So as you can see on my screen, um, our Facebook um, handle is the Open Foundation West Africa, Twitter is OFW Africa, our LinkedIn is Open Foundation West Africa, Instagram is the same as Twitter, it's OFW Africa, and our YouTube channel is Open Foundation West Africa. So I'm going to leave it here for about a minute for each of us to probably take a screenshot or yes, probably take a screenshot and then just um, follow us on all our social media handles. And in our chat as well, I'm going to send the links to all these channels so that will be easier for you to follow um, them. And um, beneath the social media links. I'm also sending a subscription link to our monthly newsletter. So every month we um, design a newsletter where we project our activities for the month. So just so you'll be updated with, you know, Open Foundation West Africa and what we have to do in the open world. Thank you so much. And also, if you have any questions with regards to this specific project, we would advise you reach out to either me, Ruby or Gameli, so that we'll add you to the WhatsApp or the Telegram groups. So it'll be easier for you to reach us to us. So I'm going to leave our emails here. I think Gamely and Ruby can also follow suit, just so it'll be easy for anyone who has issues with regards to the project. So they reach out to us and then we also reach out to them. Yeah, so this is my email. I think Gamely and Ruby will also do so in the chat. So if anyone has any question, we have some few minutes to go. We want to take some live questions. 
If there are any live questions targeted towards any of the speakers, this is the time. You can you can raise your hands and then we would unmute you to speak. Okay, so I I think Tobit Tobit has his hand up. So Tobit, the floor is yours. Hi, Tobit. Okay, if Tobit is not ready, we will give the chance to Yemi Festus. Yes, Yemi Festus. Hello, Yemi, can you hear us? Hello, Yemi. Okay. Yeah, hello, Yemi. Oui, je vous entends un peu, mais je vous entends quand même. Okay, I think we are having some challenges oh here in two bits. Tobit and then Yemi. So um, Tobit and Yemi, what you can do is that you can leave your questions in the Q&A um, section. So I'll just read it out for the panelists to answer. So I have Victor, Victor here too. Victor. Hello, Victor. Uh, good afternoon. If you can afternoon, hear me. Victor. Yes, yeah. we can hear you clearly. Okay, I uh, was so interesting, an amazing session. And um, I truly love it, and I appreciate what uh, Wiki and uh, the Open Foundation West Africa is doing. I just connected to follow the social media handle. Um, my question is: uh, I don't know how it is possible, you know, to partner with my organization. We have a project that we call Digital Awareness Project in Nigeria and is targeted to schools at the grassroots level, uh, whereby systems as computers are provided to schools, you know, and then sometimes we provide more of a training. And with this uh, QX, I understand that there are quite a number of uh, content. How can we collaborate, you know, with uh, your institution to partner in order to, you know, leverage on this opportunity so that we can make it more impactful because it's something you provide and then the content and then the follow-up is not there. It's always a challenge. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much for your question. Of course, this is a very um, great opportunity to start this partnership. And so we are very open. We, you can reach out to us on email, but uh, we also encourage that um, we enroll you. I mean, you'll be part of the mentorship program so that you can understand how the tool is being used, how to put content. Also bear in mind that Kiwich doesn't have content. So what we do is that we put tailored made content on these tools for you. So this is very good and can, suit, can be used to suit any uh, targeted audience that you have. So, I mean, we, we're very open as well as other organizations who are here are very open to see how both of us can leverage uh, on our skills and opportunities to really bring impact in other African countries like yours. I've actually registered uh, for the uh, training so that I can okay. record on the process and then I'll be happy to receive information about it and I'll be willing to participate. Okay, Thank you. this is great. Sure, we'll take note of that. Um, so the name is Victor, we'll take note of that. And, yeah, and Victor Piara, actually. Victor Piara, okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Victor. Any Thank other? You. Yeah, I think Yemi is ready now. Hello, Yemi. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hello. So I think that's the... Hey, hello, Amy. Can you hear us? 
can hear you. Can you hear me now? Great, great. We can hear you now. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much. And it's a very been a wonderful time here on this. Uh, I mean, on this. Uh, um, however, um, I also want to appreciate it for at least a few. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. I don't know if the content I understand that Kiwi is full, and it's uh, going to be uh, just the uh, content of content from platform for this Kiwi. That's my question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yemi. I, I, you were breaking a bit. The internet connectivity, which is an issue in Africa, a very common um, issue. Uh, I don't know if you are asking about uh, how do you get content on Kiwix? Is that is that a question, or if you can? I, I didn't catch the latter part of your question. Yeah. Uh, uh... Come again. Okay. Uh, I'll see, um, Can you type it? Can you do that? Okay, that will be good. That will be good. Okay, thank you, Sierra Rosie. Thank you so much. Okay, I think we have a few more hands up. Okay. So we have. Um, Obi Ezelo. We'll take two more questions and then um, we can continue. Sure. Yes. Okay. So, Obi. Okay. If Obi is not ready, we'll quickly move on to um, Say Educator. Hello. Hello. Okay. Sure. Obi. Yeah. Obi, you can hear you. Okay. Um, Thank you for the beautiful presentation and all the beautiful initiatives. Um, my question is, how do we, okay, I'm from Nigeria and we just finished an uh, implementation of uh, reading Wikipedia in the classroom and uh, internet connectivity, uh, source of power supply and uh, Teachers being digital competent is some of the challenge. Are uh, some of the challenges we face during the implementation? Now, in using this Kiwi, I don't know how to put it. Is there is there age restriction? Is there uh, things that it's not compliant with, so that we know how to, you know teach the teachers or the students how to use it? Is there something that, I don't know how to put it, but I, I guess you have an idea of what I want to say. Is there something that uh, the Kiwi is, um, how do I, not, you know, something not being compliant with something? Is there, is there, I don't know. Yes, I get, I get your question. Um, yes. I'll let Otmo answer to that question. All right, thank you so much for bailing me out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for the wonderful question. I think um, in, in, in current times and because of um, technology and then digital information and digital issues, you have to be very cautious about internet security. And then when it comes to digital, to security is very important. So for your question, the simple answer I can give to you is that there is nothing like um, 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 an age bound to it, but then the content is specific. So you, the person, the content you might want to give, the content might be age specific. So KWX is just a reader, and then you come up with the content. So the content you might want to read with the KWX is where the bone of contention is. Is that content child friendly? Is that content student friendly? So it comes down to the content you may want to use the KWX for. And so, for example, um, you may have a TV in your home. The TV can be used to listen to news or watch cartoons, but the same TV can be used to, for other stuff. And so what's the content thereof is determined by 
the person who is using the queries. So if I don't want my case to, or if I don't want my students, as a matter of fact, to learn on Wikipedia, I don't give them the Wikipedia content. If I don't want them to read something on maybe chemistry, I don't give them that content. So queries, once again, give you the flexibility to be able to control what the users, the information they, or the content the US may have access to. And I think, um, I don't know if I've been able to do justice to the question for you, if not, um, yeah. So the content is key wow. and that can be age specific. Yeah, wow. if I- Dan, I, I, Dan will also add to it. I was gonna say, I, I think that what, what, what he just said was exactly right. The important part to realize about Kiwix is you don't have access to the whole internet. So you, that's both, I and mean, that's a good thing in one way that you, you don't have to worry about the security or going to strange sites or age restricted, you know, or, or, you know, adult sites or other things like that. You only get what you choose to download and install. So when you install Kiwix, you get a catalog of what's available. And it's, it's only a subset of, of the internet, you know, it's of the web. It's got certain pieces, but even to what, to uh, talked about, you can get parts of Wikipedia. So if you were interested in, for instance, if you were doing lessons around chemistry, you could just download the chemistry pages within Wikipedia and install them and use that. And so while you're talking about chemistry, you know, the people using Kiwix could just look at the chemistry pages. They can't go reading about other things or anything else. So you have a lot of control over exactly what you install into, into Kiwix. I mean, you can, as, as Stefan said, you can install the entire Wikipedia, English Wikipedia. You can install that on your computer if you want. Or you can install, you know, the top 5,000 pages or the top 50,000 pages or pages about geography or, or whatever. So there's a lot of different packages that you can install. And so you choose that. And so then you don't have to worry about ages because you've got appropriate content that you, because you're in control of it. And that's really the key point. It's not, you're not browsing the open web. You're browsing a, a snapshot of certain sites. And that's the, the strength that you have in, in being able to do that. Wow, this is insightful. Okay, okay, okay. sorry, sorry, a follow up. So that means uh, the content I'm supposed to, get is not restricted to only wikipedia sites i can get content from other sites yes they've been and that was what stefan said they're adding more you know it's it's not the whole web right it's but they're it's wikipedia it's some of the other different sites i know they had some ted talks in there they have a, a range of other different things and you can add those there and and i know stefan was saying they're looking to get more you know, and, and add more. And that's part of what the Kiwix organization is doing is as people make requests for more info, they're going and, and getting that information, compressing it, putting it in the format they need, and then making it available. Wow. So, okay. so, so it's you. basically turning any form of website into a SIM file, like offline. Felix wants to add to it. Yes, Felix. Felicia Mutant. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I was talking the whole time. So I was just saying that, and as much as you can put everything and anything on Kiwix, you also have to be cognizant of the licenses that these sites are under. And so, in the spirit of open knowledge, we would hope that all these resources and sites are under open licenses, but not all of them are. And so, if you're picking something from a site, you must be wary of what license it's under because then it might be a license that you're not allowed to use and for ethical purposes you might want to consider that before putting that on qx but like everybody's saying anything can go on qx once you can compress it yeah wow no no nabi wants to add to it yeah i just want to share one point in here as dan said uh nicely and also felix already added so as i said we have 320 million book provided by the government every year. And the, these books, online version is available under the government website. The problem is that still the books is not un, under the, you know, any of open license. The book is free, but the license is not declared clearly. It is often a, often license 
or something like that. So uh, as, uh, as I said in my previous comment, we try to convince the specific, you know, education ministry to put a license uh, in the website that this content is like any, any kind of Creative Commons or GNU, any kind of open license. So that we, we bring this content under uh, any, like, any tools like KX so that in rural people, rural students, easy, easy, able to easy access to the content without internet. So, so as I, I said in my speech, first we need to convince our government and we are still trying to uh, connect it with the minister, the minister to convince them to provide a link or uh, some, say something that this content is under open license. Thank you. And, you know, uh, as Felix said, any content may be in uh, collaborative with kids, but the content must be in the open license so that everyone can access easily. And as I said again, sharing all this power. Wow, this is very interesting. Our governments have so many books and all of these books amazingly have e-copies. But the challenge is that you're not understanding why those books should be open. And that means that we are depriving a lot of people from accessing them. We are not achieving the goal anyways. So um, let's connect to our Ministry of Education and see how we can bring those books on KWIX and make them accessible. You know, I just interrupt you again. One, one thing is, I think, if you, if Open Africa Foundation and you guys are trying to work, you know, government people don't understand what is the meaning of open license. In my experience, I see, you know, they say it is free. So that free is not likely. So try to convince them that way. I we say that you know if you published any book, any photo, any something is under Creative Commons license, you clearly say to government people that the authority or the photographer copyright is yours. The content is free anyone, but if anyone try to use those those content, they must need to you know uh, talk with you or give the your credit. So if we try to convince them that way, the government way, then they may already we see the government official already convinced about our styling. So we just push them with their way. That will be very help you guys. Thank you. Wow, this is very helpful. Um, we are wrapping up. I don't know. We are almost at time. So. Um, we would we would take the conversation further. Just follow us on our social media handles for more updates around the project. And I'll hand it over to Gameli to take it up from there. Well, all too soon we are at the end of the program. It has been fun, it's been exciting, it's been exciteful. And we want to express our gratitude to everyone who made it. Your involvement contributed to its success. We would like to thank our partners, UNESCO, Open Knowledge Foundation, and the Internet Society Ghana Chapters. Thank you so much for enlightening us. We are all hopeful of more collaborations with you so we can achieve more. Thank you, Moses Jeme of UNESCO, Francis Amini, and Maxwell Beganim of Internet Society of Ghana Chapter. And Sarah Petty of Open Knowledge Foundation, you have been of immense support to the success of the program. Thank you, Rene, for helping with the French interpretations. You have been awesome. We thank everyone who joined the session. Your participation is well appreciated. We look forward to you implementing Kiwix in your communities so we can change the world through education. Thank you and goodbye from us at Open Foundation, West Africa. <laughs>